Okay, looks like it's my turn. Um, my name is Jill Pyatt. I live in Southern California. I'm a, an insurance professional, a mother, I'm a wife, and um, I'm also an activist for liberty and peace. This is the first time I've done something like this. It's um, exciting, but it's also been a bit daunting. I would like to tell everyone if my screen goes out, um, uh, I do have my netbook ready to go. I've had some laptop issues this week. So anyway, if, if it goes out, just wait a minute and I'll get the other one going. Hold on just a second, folks. Okay. Okay. Um, the topic that I, st I um, chose here, <coughs> excuse me. The topic I've chosen here is um, executive orders and how they might possibly lead to, um, um, boy, I'm nervous, folks, um, martial law. <laughs> okay. I chose this topic because I read an article a few years ago about continu continuity of government plans. Um, it sounds like a good thing, like um, kind of fairly innocuous, but it c occurred to me that this really could uh, change our country and it really could happen on a president's whim. Um, let me give you a definition of executive orders. They are legally binding orders given by the president acting as the head of the executive branch to federal administration agencies. They completely bypass uh, Congress. An executive order becomes law simply by being published in the federal registry and they take effect in 30 days. Um, executive orders don't require congressional approval to take effect and they actually carry the same weight as laws passed by Congress. For today's purposes, I'm going to be talking about presidential executive orders. Um, of course, their governors can use them. In fact, um, Rick Perry's kind of had a lot of discussion about his Garcil executive order, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about uh, presidential executive orders. Um, they've actually um, been around since 1789. Every president has made some. The first one that was numbered was by Abraham Lincoln in October 1862. Since then, there have been over 13,000 of them. They are consecutively numbered. There have been many historic uses of executive orders. Andrew Jackson used executive powers to force the Cherokee Nation off their ancestral land. Franklin D. Roosevelt delegated military uh, authority to gather all the people from a particular zone, and this paved the way for Japanese Americans to be sent to internment camps. Hitler used executive orders to turn Germany into a Nazi dictatorship. Harry Truman used them to integrate armed forces, and Dwight D. Eisenhower used them to desegregate public schools. Now I'd like to share with you the executive orders which got my attention. They're actually all about, these are all actually about 30 years old. Okay, we'll start with Executive Order 1990. Allows the governments to take over all modes of transportation and control of highways and seaports. Executive Order 10,995 allows the government to seize and control the communication media. Let me just check the streaming, make sure everything looks okay on the other end. It looks like it. Okay. <clears throat> Executive Order 10,997 allows the government to take over all electrical power, gas, petroleum, fuels, and minerals. Executive Order 10,998 allows the government to seize all means of transportation, including personal cars, trucks, or vehicles of any kind, <clears throat> and uh, total control over all highways, seaports, and waterways. Executive Order 10,999 allows the government to take over all food resources and farms. Executive Order 11,000 allows the government to mobilize civilians into work brigades under su government supervision. Executive Order 11001 allows the government to take over all health, education, and welfare functions. Executive Order 11002 designates the Postmaster General <coughs> designates the Postmaster General to operate a national registration of all persons. Executive Order 10,000 oh, excuse me 11003 allows the government to take over all airports and aircraft, including commercial airplanes. Executive Order 11004 allows the Housing and Finance Department of Authority to relocate communities, build new housing with public funds, designate areas to be abandoned, and establish new locations for populations. Executive Order 11005 allows the government to take over railroads, inland waterways, and public storage facilities. 
the one that absolutely terrified me is actually this one. Executive Order 12,919. That collects all those prior executive orders that I just read. <clears throat> collects all of them into one executive order. For the stroke of a pen, everything I just described can be in place. Everything. The government can have complete control of all transportation, food, housing, communications, and so on. Okay. Um, here are some disturbing recent developments. George W. Bush created uh, Executive Order 13228, the Office of Homeland Security, um, and that was um, put in order 11 days after the 9-11 attacks. January 2010, Obama signed Executive Order 13528, which established the Council of Governors in order to strengthen the partnership between federal and state governments to protect against all manner of threats, including terrorism, natural disasters, and um, all of these 10 districts will be federally controlled. Um, Executive Order 12,148 created the Federal Emergency Management System. Richard Nixon started this, then it was further nurtured by Carter, Clinton, and both Bushes. Okay, here are some causes for concern. Here's a definition of martial law, military rule or authority imposed on a civilian population when the civil authorities can't maintain law and order. It can be declared due to national disasters, riots, biological attacks, financial uncertainty such as a stock market crash, civil unrest due to economic breakdown, or anything which can break down law and order. Congress will have no power to protect the martial law declaration and can only review the process six months after martial law was declared. Okay, here's some historic uses of martial law. President Lincoln just declared martial law during the war between the states, arresting anyone who dissented from his wartime policies, including newspaper editors and legislators. In 1871, President Grant sent troops into North South Carolina to confiscate all private guns. In 1914, President Wilson ordered the infantry into Colorado to disarm everyone involved um, in a civil a union dispute there, including law enforcement and National Guard. And then, of course, in 2005, after Hurricane Katrina, people were made to leave their houses and uh, relinquish their weapon weapons. And that happened uh, recently, and you remember what a mess it was. Uh, the link between this seems to be um, FEMA. This is an area that everybody's going to have to do their own research because the thing is there are a lot of rumors about FEMA and a lot of things that um, were hard to verify. For example, um, I have read a couple places that they only use 6% of their budget for um, emergency preparedness and they're using much of that other money to build underground bunkers. Okay? Really found that difficult to verify. Heard it, read it several different places, however. What I can verify is that there are FEMA camps being built across the country. We have to ask ourselves, why? Are they going to house terrorists? Are they going to house illegal immigrants? Are they going to house maybe people who don't follow the rules like uh, me or maybe you? Uh, this is definitely cause con first concern. In the, um, and I'll also point out, I mentioned the, um, okay, anyway, there are at least three times when FEMA has been ready to take over the most recent, um, and the most recent was during the LA riots. If they had spread to other cities, the president was ready to declare martial law and FEMA was at the ready to take over. Here's another disturbing fact. Once FEMA has taken over, there is no contingency plan to restore constitutional powers. Excuse me. If martial law takes effect, expect this to happen. Your constitutional rights will disappear. Freedom of speech and assembly will be restricted. <coughs> Excuse me. Gun ownership will be under attack. People can be arrested and held indefinitely without charges. What can we do? Well, first let's look at what Congress can do. So far, Congress has only overturned two executive orders. 
They can do this by passing legislation in conflict with executive orders or by refusing to approve funding in the former. The president can veto Congress's decision, then can overrule by two-thirds vote. What can we do? We can become self-reliant. We can avoid areas of civil unrest and or martial law. If possible, we can find some place to stay that's away from large groups of people. We can stay armed. We can try really hard not to draw attention to ourselves. We can try to save up to six months of food, save as much water as possible. <coughs> Invest in hard commodities of tangibles, firearms, precious metals, tool, and food. For example, these are things that were um, uh, suggested. Find like-minded people who can help each other through bad times. <coughs> and then, of course, we have also probably the toughest of all, we need to elect ethical and moral presidents. Um, I'd like to tell you all that executive orders are actually readily available for you to read yourself. <coughs> this is not some conspiracy theory. Just go to the White House um, website. It's also on the Federal Registry, which is in there called Executive Orders Dispensation Tables. <coughs> Excuse me. In my research, I found a chilling remark from arch conservative activist Howard J. Ruff. Since the enactment of Executive Order 11,490, the only thing standing between us and dictatorship is the good character of the president and the lack of a crisis severe enough that the public would stand for it. <coughs> Excuse me. Allergies have come up in the fall, and I apologize for coughing. That's actually everything I had to say. If someone has a comment, ask. I'm reading the um, the comment feed. <coughs> I'd be happy to ask answer questions or discuss it with someone. Every time I practice this, it took more than about 25 minutes, so I hope I didn't forget something in my nervousness. But anyway, um, I hope you've all learned something, and I hope you can all. Um, do some research on your own. Thank you. <coughs> Is anybody there? If you've heard me, can somebody at least say that you've heard me so I know this worked? Hello? Anybody out there? Okay, thank you. It sounds like you did hear me. <laughs> okay, I'll sit here and look for any um, um, comments. Um, I am on Facebook. I'm actually pretty maxed out. I'm at 5,000 friends, but every few days I make a bunch of people mad and they unfriend me. Yeah. So if you'd like to be my friend, just look at um, Facebook. And um, I usually have things going on. I'm pretty mouthy and say what I think. Anybody have any questions? My name is Jill Pyatt. J-I-L-L-P-Y-E-T. I'll give you my um, email address. And my Facebook is actually just under my name, Jill Pyatt.
Um, don't have a website. Um, I do most of what I say on um, Facebook. I also do post articles on a blog called Independent Political Report. I will do that. I like to, like to uh, cause mischief there and try to post things every once in a while. I do. I am a libertarian. I do. <clears throat> I'm a libertarian. I am active here in Southern California. I'm the region. I'm in um, Region 63, the Pasadena area. It looks like I have a question. Uh, yes, a sitting president can invalidate any prior executive order. As a matter of fact, when I started reading this, there was a lot of. Um, I heard a lot of rumors that on. Um, um, Obama's first day of um, in office, he created an executive order that sealed all of his documents. And of course, the birthers really take that seriously and they keep throwing it around. It's actually much more confused than that. Actually, that was the third incarnation of that, and, and something was done prior to protect another president. Another president took it away, and then another president put it in, and then another president took it away. And then Obama put it in force, so I decided that was not, um, it didn't have anything to do with us. So I didn't mention that. Um, maybe I'm being a little paranoid, but I hope everybody noticed yesterday in uh, Denver that there was this big terrorism um, rehearsal practice. Uh, what caught my eye and happened to bother me, I don't know if it bothered anybody else, but they actually planned to gather all the children and put them in a stadium there, excuse me, my kid wouldn't go there. In fact, I, I actually think that's worth telling your kid. If something happens at your school, I'll come get you no matter what, and don't go. So, anyway. Uh, what? Yes, Joseph, um, a sitting president can invalidate any prior executive order. Um. No, the Supreme Court, I don't believe, has challenged them at all. And yes, this does have to do with war powers. Um, there actually have been a couple wars fought. Um, uh, Clinton fought a war with Yugoslavia under executive order. Um, and that's basically, in theory, it's supposed to keep us all safe in the um, event of a national emergency. But then, of course, anything can cause a national emergency. And Congress can't review whether something was indeed an em um, an emergency until six months after it was called. So, I mean, what as in shock to the company thing? I don't understand that. I'm sorry, Joseph. UAVs? I'm sorry. Can you spell it? Uh, the terrorism drill is incredibly just um, alarming to me. And um, to me, it's saying that we better watch out or there's going to be a false flag event. Obama needs to look like a hero. We need to keep our eyes open. He needs to do something to look like he's really a good guy. And this makes me very nervous. Um, drone planes is, are unconscionable to me. Uh, anything having to war is having to do with war is absolutely more than I can even think about. In fact, this is a topic I've wanted to explore. I've also really wanted to put together some information on depleted uranium. I uh, don't know if I'd be able to handle that, though, um, kind of uh, queasy. But these are things people need to know. This is the uglier part of um, our country. <laughs> We're doing some really awful things in our wars. But anyway, um, my topic today is basically saying how they can uh, completely take away most of our freedoms. They can tell us where to live. They can tell us, take us away from our homes. They can have me destroy my home, put me in a new home, they can control all food, they can control all kept transportation. That, that to me is just unconscionable and we need to keep a good eye on who's out there. So, anyway. <laughs> um, not able to answer that, Joseph, on the Steven Seagal chicken massacre. Um, know who Steven Seagal is. It's not really something I follow. Sorry, I'm not able to answer that. So, what other 
um, of these topics have been good so I can look them up and listen to them. What other speakers have done really well? Or what, uh, what speakers have done really well? Um, well, some presidents think they are above the law. I would say that um, certainly not a fan of Obama, but I think a lot of what Obama is doing is because he saw W get away with it. Some presidents do indeed believe they're above the law. Um, an unconstitutional law is not a law. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to argue that, Dean, but that doesn't mean things like that don't happen. Okay. Okay, I understand Lincoln issued the first executive order. <clears throat> John, um, good question. I would not be able to answer that without doing more research. Um, I'm a little more interested in um, this century's history, and I would not want to discuss something I don't really know about. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know that any have been challenged. Well, actually, <clears throat> yes, there was challenged in court. And um, trying to remember what happened. It was um, struck down, and the president having to do with it just kind of did it anyway. And let me think if I can remember what that was. Um, it's been challenged in court, not often, once or twice. Yes, the National Guard and state reserves are indeed expected to follow executive orders, at which point I might recommend that you folks Google Oath Keepers. There might be some people in this country that would not be willing to do things that they consider to be illegal, but you bet, Joseph, the National Guard and state reserves are definitely expected to follow these executive orders, and I believe that there are being drills across the, across the country, and they're practicing this. And um, all it takes is something to scare people enough to call an emergency, and if people act up a little bit, then they'll smack down you know, martial law and all of this. That's what I think could happen. So, um, Dean, I think you're a Facebook friend. I will look up in my notes. I have quite a bit of notes. There was indeed something challenged in court. I just need to look it up so I can be specific. So I'll email you something tonight. Um, it, it, they are not usually... Um, challenged in court. They just, for some reason, they aren't challenged very much. So, anyway. And um, I saw an article um, quickly that Herman Cain won the straw poll of Florida, but I couldn't find anything else, which makes me wonder who number two is. Did anybody see that? Anybody see who, um, where Ron Paul came in the executive orders? I mean, if <laughs> in the straw poll. I'm sorry. I'm really nervous. I'll be glad when this is over. I've learned a lot, though. Very, very interesting topic. Okay. <clears throat> the candidate who shall not be named. Okay, I won't say it. I won't say it. Actually, I recognize a lot of these names. I think a lot of you are Facebook people. I don't know if all of you are libertarians. Um, I'm here in Southern California if I don't know you. Um, I didn't see the Ventura show on FEMA because I don't get true TV. I get many cable TVs, but I don't get that one. Um, I've read Jesse Ventura. I think that he does serves a valuable purpose. I think he exposes a lot of true things. He, like Alex Jones, are kind of drama kings, but I'm afraid I believe most of what they say um, has some value to it. I think these FEMA camps are very, very disturbing. Um, there are reports that People are hiring people to run them? Um, why? That's really, really, really creepy. Um, thank you for your comment, Dean, that lots of military knows the Constitution. That's very good to know. Uh, Joseph, I'll definitely check that out tonight. I, I like Jesse Ventura. Um, I've heard some talk of him running for office. I don't think so. I, I think he serves his purpose well where he is. I can't really see him. Um, <clears throat> being vice president or anything. Overstating the threats? Well, I will say that among my libertarian friends here, and I have quite a few in California, I do seem to be among the most cynical. So hopefully things aren't really as bad as I think. Um, but I think things are pretty bad. I think that um, things are pretty bad. 
And I think that we all need to be ready at any point to <laughs> assert our rights, so to speak. I think civil unrest is inevitable. And perhaps civil unrest is the only thing we can do at this point to get some things done. I don't know. Um, Roddy Rod Piper, okay, that one escapes me too. Um, Joseph won't disagree with that comment at all. It is a race between economic collapse and a government fooling the population, no question about it. I, a lot of the population is fooled, but a lot less than the government thinks. I mean, I think a lot of people really do know what's going on. That's why there's talk of limiting the internet, because we talk. We all know each other. Across the world, we know each other. And a lot of these things are common everywhere. People in Europe aren't concerned about um, executive order and martial law because as far as the United States, but it certainly would affect them if it happened. And the Texas A&M game must be over because my husband just showed up. So I can tell by the look on his face when he gets in here whether they want or not. Anyway, um, any other questions about um, martial law? Does anybody else think it's a likely thing to happen? Is anybody else alarmed that this is in our next 10 years, perhaps, maybe even five years? Yes, Dean, I agree with you, and I think that Obama needs to look like a hero, actually. I really do. So I think this could happen really soon, actually. So, <clears throat> anyway. I think I'm the last one tonight. Um, don't believe anybody's speaking after me. My cat spilled iced tea all over my notes about five minutes before the show. Hi. I'm done and we're just kind of discussing some things. Did they win? Oh my god, I'm sorry. Texas A&M did not win. That's not good. I'll sit for about five more minutes and see if I have any more questions. Um, again, I told you, Dean, I'd get back to you later on with some information. I'm going to sit here and watch the notes, but I think I'm going to turn off the webcam because it's making me nervous. So I'll sit here and read the notes. If you guys want to talk, I'll turn it back on. <laughs> but I'm going to turn it off. So you all have a nice night. I'll be watching this thread for a while, and then I'll be on Facebook. So um, have a good evening. Oh, I see a new question. John, I don't know what you mean by signing statements. Oh, the writers to a signed piece of legislation. Actually, I have seen no relationship between an executive order and um, any legislation. I think they're kept separately uh, very much on purpose. I think that executive orders are completely bypass Congress because they don't want Congress to be involved. So. Okay, you guys have a nice night. I don't know if I have to stop this.